I'm Thomas, and I'm a sex researcher. And this, this is Dr. Justin Lay Miller. I'm a social psychologist and author. Along with having a textbook under your belt, you also have a new book called Tell Me What You Want. What is the big takeaway of the book? So one is that you're probably a lot more normal than you think you are. You know, the things that you're fantasizing about are probably the things that your friends, and I know it's an uncomfortable thought, family members might be fantasizing about too. Uh, so if you've ever fantasized about, say, group sex or BDSM, you're you're pretty normal, right? It, it, it's interesting, you know, what would be unusual would be if you just fantasized about, say, missionary style, heterosexual mm -hmm. intercourse, you know, on a Thursday night, and it's like, if that was your, your one thing that you ever fantasized sure. about, that would be unusual, right? We're all kinky, just in, in slightly different ways. How would you recommend that someone goes about bringing up their fetish or their fantasy to their partner? So this is something I do in the book in the, the last two chapters. I outline a lot of the steps that you would need to take if you were thinking about sharing your fantasy with the partner and also going a step further and even acting on it. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of considerations you have to take into account. There are potential risks and rewards when you start sharing and then acting on sexual mm -hmm, fantasies. Mm -hmm. so you need to be very mindful of, you know, what what are the potential good things that can happen, but also what are the potential bad things. Um, but when it comes to just sort of starting that conversation, you have to start by feeling good about yourself first. You know, okay. if you don't have that level of self-acceptance, sure. you can't go the next step of, of really having a meaningful conversation with your partner. And also, if this is in the context of a relationship, that relationship mm -hmm. has to be in a good place mm -hmm. first, too. You need right. to have trust and, and intimacy. And I would say when it comes to sharing fantasies, especially, you know, more of the kinky and fetish type fantasies, start low, go slow. Start, you know? low. start okay. with some of the tamer fantasies, work your way in, build up trust and intimacy with your partner. And then once you've got that established, you can start introducing the more adventuresome things. Baby steps to orgies, right? <laughs> Oh my God, can that be your new book, please? <laughs> Baby Steps to Orgies, Jesus Christ. I, I might put that on a t-shirt too. Okay, Justin, so in trolling your Facebook, I saw that you posted a photo the other day of yourself in a red tank top with a line under it about how you were working on an article about people's fetish with Santa Claus. You forgot to mention I was wearing a Santa hat in the picture as well. I guess I, guess I didn't see the hat. I missed the hat, I apologize. I, I was getting into the, the Christmas spirit by writing about Santa Claus porn uh, because it, it turns out that a lot of people are turned on by this idea. If you search mm -hmm. for Santa Claus porn on Pornhub or another search engine, you'll find hundreds and in some cases thousands of hits depending on the search engine you're, lo you're looking at. So there, there's a lot out there. So I wanted to, to explore, you know, what's, what's the psychology behind that? What's sure. drawing people to be hot for Santa. Uh, and, and I think there's a few things. I think for some people it might be a little bit of a, a, tab, a taboo. You know, it's kind of transgressive to take this, this figure of this wholesome holiday, this religious holiday, mm -hmm. and to, to sexualize it in a way. Uh, so, so that could be part of the appeal. We know that taboos are a big turn on for right. a lot of people. Um, another part of it could be that, you know, there's just a lot of dirty things that Santa does in a way when you think about it. You know, he's asking people to sit on his lap. He's okay. He's like <laughs> spying on you when you're sleeping and presumably when you're having sex too. So it's like, he's always watching. He's a voyeur. Uh, <laughs> I had no idea. No one ever told me that Santa was such a dirty bird. So, you know, I wonder to what extent maybe that might play into it as well. Okay. Um, but yeah, there, there could be other things going on too. Do you also have a blog called Sex and Psychology? And I'm really curious to know how what you write about has, has been changing and evolving with this new awareness in society about um, gender identity and sexuality and the Me Too movement. Something I've started thinking about recently is in the midst of Me Too and, and all of these discussions we're having about consent is how do these topics we're discussing, like affirmative consent, apply in the context of, say, BDSM encounters? Mm -hmm. How do they apply in, in group sex encounters? I think, you know, there's often this assumption that sex is a two-person activity and that it, you know, primarily right. focused right. on, um, you know, I guess more vanilla activities, if you want to use that term. So how do we 
have a broader conversation about consent that encompasses diverse practices and diverse relationship structures. And sex is a very social experience for a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, as it, as it probably should be. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, you know, we don't have a lot of research that, that kind of goes beyond the two-person dynamic of sex. The reason that I use your book over a, a different one, because there are a lot of other human sexuality books out there, um, is that it seems so accessible and readable that at, at some points it, it almost feels like you're reading a novel as opposed to scientific research, although it is packed with scientific research. And that's where I think having run a blog for a few years mm. before I was writing the textbook really helped in terms of having that ability to write more engaging content. Right. I, a lot of people who write textbooks, they've only written academic journal articles. Which is so, difficult. <laughs> yes, but they only know how to write for their peers. Sure. And so writing for a, an audience of undergraduate students who want to be educated but also entertained is a very different sort of thing. All of the information for Justin's books are below the textbook and tell me what you want, all of the Amazon stuff right down there. If you are interested in, in actually buying a textbook, which I know sounds really weird if you're not in college, why would I buy a textbook? I'm telling you that his textbook is a great read and you will really enjoy it. It is totally digestible and um, I guarantee you will or I will give you your money back. That's not going to happen. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for watching. I've got a lot of content in production and I don't want you to miss out. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. And in the meantime, check out one of these other videos. And don't forget to send me your questions about sex to thomastalksabout at gmail.com.